Welcome to Consciousness Unfiltered. Get ready for a very different, vulnerable, and uncensored conversation with Dr. Anthony Mattis and his amazing guests. They'll be sharing the powerful tools of access consciousness that have helped thousands of people all over the world to create change in every area of their lives. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Dr. Anthony Mattis, and welcome to Consciousness Unfiltered. Um, today's episode is titled, Is Consciousness a Demand in Your World? Is Consciousness a Demand in Your World? Now, um, yesterday, I guess it was March 30th, 2022, I did actually a Facebook Live on this particular topic. And so um, I'm, I'm not going to um, go into what I talked about yesterday. This is sort of like kind of like a part two of yesterday's call where I did the uh, Facebook Live, I'm sorry, the uh, Instagram Live. So you can check out my Instagram page at Dr. Anthony Mattis and check out that video. But I wanted to sort of maybe go a little bit further with this particular conversation because, so just to give you a, a little bit of background, um, this was a conversation that I had with Dr. Dane here and uh, Brandon Watt. Dr. Dane here is the co-creator of Access Consciousness that was created by Gary Douglas and Brendan Watt is one of four facilitators is able to facilitate the trusted possibilities amongst a lot of other, other um, classes as well. Anyway, so we're all having lunch together and, and we sat down and uh, Dane says to both of us, or he asked the both of us, he's like, is consciousness a demand in your world? And I'm like, well, yeah, that's why I do this weird, wild, wacky stuff. And, you know, being a holistic chiropractor for 22 years, I've always been a seeker of things, many things, healing modalities, spiritual things, philosophies, you name it. And nothing really ever worked or changed my life like the tools of access consciousness. So that's why I've been a facilitator for the last 10 years and even closed my practice down. But anyway, so he puts this question into both of our worlds. And I was like, yes, at first. And then I realized that when I went into reaction, I realized I was defending something and probably defending where consciousness is not a demand in my world. And this is not like an absolute thing where it's like it totally is or is totally not kind of thing, you know, but there are moments where when I'm going to conclusion, I'm not doing consciousness. When I go to judgment, I'm not doing consciousness. I'm not being conscious. Let's just say that. It's not about doing. Consciousness is not about doing. Consciousness is about being. So let me correct myself there. Consciousness is not about right or wrong. It's not about good or bad. There is no polarity in consciousness. Only choice and question. When I'm doing, when I'm being superior, like my point of view is superior than yours. My point of view is better than yours because I have maybe perhaps, I don't know, specific results that justify my point of view of why my, my way is better. That's not consciousness. So anyhow, so we're having this conversation and I go into a bunch of different things and tools and and insight in the Instagram live. So, so check that out, go to my page, check that part out. But I want to start from like, th that question was still sort of like reverberating in my universe. And so I actually called Gary Douglas, um, you know, the founder of Access Consciousness. And, um, you know, he and Dane have been partners for more than 22 years. And Access Consciousness, for those of you who don't know, has, has been around for more than 30 years now. And so anyway, so I asked, I asked Gary, so I'm going to actually share the phone call conversation I had with him, you know, and I'm like, Hey, you know, Gary, um, Dane put this question into Brendan and I's world. And I would like to have maybe some more insight about this question. And, you know, well, Gary's, and in Gary's question to me is like, well, what are you doing consciousness for? And at first, I was like, my first response was like, I want to make the world a better place. And I knew immediately when I said the word better, 
That's a judgment, right? It's actually superior, the superior point of view. Like what you think might make and contribute to the world being a better place may be totally different than what I think may make the world a better place. I mean, let's take religion, for example. If that's, I mean, just that's one thing, that's one entity or institution that's probably created, I would say, the most separation in the world <laughs> in a lot of wars, right? Let's just look at history. I'm not saying something that's not true. It's very true, right? People kill other people in the name of their particular god or their guru or their sage or saint or whatever. The evidence of that is in our history books and your history books for those of you who are in other parts of the world. So then you got politics, <laughs> right? People think their political points of view are better than someone else's political point of view. Wars have also been created because of that too and because of economics and all that, but we're not gonna get into all that stuff. So what is, like, what do you mean when you say, well, I'm doing this thing called consciousness to make the world a better place? Well, what is better? So I caught myself and I'm like, well, and then Gary goes, yeah, because when you say something is better than something else, when I say, I want to make the world a better place that automatically puts, automatically, I'm basically saying I have a superior point of view that's going to make this world better. Right. And I get it. You could probably say, yeah, but what about like, you know, all the different inventions and stuff like that, that, you know, they made things better. I get that. Okay. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when I'm like, I want to make a world, the world, a better place. Well, you know, what if people are choosing shit because they want to choose shit? Does everybody really want to be better? Again, look at the evidence. <laughs> look at what people are choosing. Just look at what people are choosing. Do they really want to be better or create greater, or create more? So Gary goes, of course, because superiority is a judgment. And what does judging have anything to do with consciousness? So one of the, the mantras, so to speak, of access consciousness is consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. Consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. And he said to me, he goes, you're including consciousness, but you're judging it. And I was like, ouch. So where are you including consciousness, but judging it? Do you judge the things that you become aware of as right or wrong or good or bad? Now I hear some of your head saying, so you're telling me that murder is, is, is good? No, that's not what I'm saying. But haven't people been killing each other since the beginning of time? Right? Don't we make, um, well, what's the word? I don't know what the word for it, but don't we make allowances for murder? Like war? I mean, look at, What's happening with Russia and the Ukraine, right? From Putin's point of view, what he's doing is right. The murder he's doing right now is correct. It's justified from his point of view. Other parts of the world say that's an incorrect point of view. Now we're back into the polarities of our reality, the rights and the wrongs and the goods and the bads of things. Is that consciousness? Or is that ultimately separation? Don't we, or when I say we, uh, you know, the United States have reason and justifications for going to war? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, let's just look at the evidence. We have lots of reasons and justifications for killing people all the time. Why is that not murder? 
oh, because there's a political agenda there. So that makes it okay. Consciousness includes everything and judges nothing. What kind of world would you like to create? What kind of world would you like to contribute to? What kind of world would you be willing to allow to contribute to you? So, so Gary goes, you know, you, you actually judge consciousness, which I do sometimes a lot. I'll admit it. You know, um, I was not an interesting point of view. Like in order to get to true allowance, you have to be an interesting point of view about everything. I mean, everything. And I definitely was not and have not been an interesting point of view with regards to the whole uh, pandemic at all <laughs> for many reasons. And I'm not going to get into any of that right now. So I mentioned to Gary, I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, Instagram live and, and, you know, like maybe I need to ask this question every day is consciousness a demand in my world. And he's like, like, yeah. And like, cause I, I started to notice where, and here's the thing. We have the things that are obvious to us in life, right? They're right there. They're right in front of our faces. They're obvious. But what about like the subtle energies? What about the things that are happening under the radar? so to speak, or like in the background, like, like a program running on the computer or whatever, you know, you don't see it on the screen, but you know, you know, you have different programs that are running, you know, in the background. Well, we have programs that are running in the background. We have agendas, uh, secret agendas that we may not even be consciously aware of, but those program programs are running in the background and those actually impact the things we choose in life, because we're not in the question. We kind of, a lot of times we just do things on automatic pilot without thinking, without being in the question. And so one of the things that we talk about in access consciousness is to learn how to live in and ask the question, never the conclusion, because the conclusion creates the limitation. So, so Gary says, yeah, consciousness is an energy. It's not a completion. It's not a conclusion. And he's like, you keep trying to make consciousness a conclusion and a completion. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And there's great spaces I get to when I'm actually being conscious, when I'm actually in the question, when I'm actually choosing, receiving the good, the bad, and the ugly of myself and others without a point of view. That's when I'm functioning from unlimited possibilities and space. And then Gary goes, consciousness never comes to a conclusion. It only comes to another question. What else is possible? And then, and then when he said that, I got so excited because I kind of like had this vision or awareness, so to speak, of this like kaleidoscopic, you know, those kaleidoscope toys you know when you look into those things and you just see these sort of like these windows within windows within windows within window and it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on, and on, and on forever right so i'm like i'm like is this almost like a kaleidoscopic never-ending energetic blah 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 and then he goes it's not almost it is a kaleidoscope of possibilities creating a continuous altering picture of possibilities of different colors and different shapes. I'm going to say that again. It's not almost a kaleidoscopic. It is a kaleidoscope of possibilities, creating a continuous, altering picture of possibilities of different colors and different shapes. I was like, whoa, yeah. I was like, that was so beautiful. Oh my God. You know, and I'm like, so when Dane asked the question to me and Brendan, or Brendan and I, I'm like, there's really no way to answer that question. And Gary goes, there is a way to answer it. It's either yes or no. I was like, oh, it's that simple. I actually went into reason and justification, like to try to prove 
that consciousness is a demand in my world, or I was trying to look for ways where it's not. So I go, so what, what does that put you into? That puts you into the right and the wrong and the good and the bads of things and back into mental masturbation, which never works, which ultimately creates you judging you. It's a real slippery slope and it's very, very easy to kind of fall into. So it is a matter of yes or no. And, you know, what if you actually look at that every 10 seconds of your life? That may make things a little bit e that may make things a little bit easier because if you could just function from 10 second increments, that doesn't like it gets you out of the past, your past shit that's happened to you. And it gets you out of worrying about your future. It gets you in the now moment. And I love that tool. It's a tool that we learn in the foundation class of access consciousness. It's like, well, you know, if you had 10 seconds to live the rest of your life, what would you choose? Are you going to choose conclusion, completion? Or are you going to try to make those 10 seconds magical? It's possible. I know for me, I'm just going to like have fucking gratitude for the time I had. Or if there's someone next to me, even if it's a stranger, I may just look deep into their eyes and be like, I'm fucking grateful for you, man. Or miss. See ya. See you on the other side. Or the next lifetime, whatever. So he says, yes, there is a way to answer it. It's either yes or no. So I ask you, is consciousness a demand in your world? Yes or no? It's as simple as that. And it's not to make you wrong. And it's not to prove where you are being it. It's a simple yes or no question. And if it's not, what else is possible? What would you like to choose? What would you like to create? What would you like to be? And then I was like, I'm going to ask that question every day. And, and jokingly as, as Gary, well, not joke, jokingly, but not jokingly. It's, we call it a wedgie. <laughs> but he goes, um, don't ask it every day. He goes, you want to ask it every minute of every day, forever and ever. <laughs> Amen. And so that was sort of like that part. And, and what that did for me, because, you know, after that conversation with, with, with Dane and Brendan, I was, I was still trying to figure out where I'm doing it, where I'm not doing it, or where I'm being it, and where I'm not being it. And, and when I was done having this conversation with Gary, it was just, it just sort of released me from that need to figure it out. So every day when I wake up in the morning, first question I ask is, who am I? What grand and glorious adventures will I have today? Like, who am I? Because if you decided that you are someone or something, whatever, then you have to make choices every minute, every day to prove that you are that thing that you've decided you are. And, you know, whenever we define ourselves to be a certain way or define anything, it actually creates a limitation. There is no what else is possible. It's a limitation because you define yourself as something. So I love that question of who am I? And what grand and glorious adventures will I have today? Maybe one day I'm an asshole. But I don't have to feel guilty about being an asshole for the rest of my life. I could always go to question me like, okay, who would I like to be today? What would I like to be today? What would I like to choose today? And it could be simple things. It doesn't have to be this like grand and glorious thing. You're like, I'm going to get some nice soft toilet paper to wipe my ass. Because that stuff I've been buying on a discount doesn't work for my body you know what i mean so kind of trying to make things a little bit light here and not be so serious and so esoteric so you know it's like who are you and what grand gross adventures we have but i'm going to add also every day is consciousness a demand in my world and i'm going to go about my day whatever that is and if i have a choice to make about something if i choose this what will my life be like in five years? If, it, if it's contractive, I'm not choosing it. I don't care how much it sounds, sounds good. You know, 
I don't care about all the bells and whistles and how great the salesman makes it sound or whoever. If, if, when I ask the question, if I choose this, will my life be like in five years with all my choices? And it's not expansive energetically. I'm not choosing it. I don't need a reason why. I just know not to go there. And if it is expansive, I'm going to choose it, even though I may not have the evidence to support why I'm choosing what I'm choosing. Because I've learned over the last 10 years is to trust the energetics of things. You may not have the evidence to prove why you should go that way or this way, but it doesn't matter. It start. It always begins in the energetics, always. And that question opens you up to that possibility. If I choose this, what my life be like in five years? Is consciousness a demand in my world? Who am I and what grand and glorious adventures will I have today? Anyhow, I hope that um, helped someone out there and um, but ho hopefully more than one person. But yeah, look at that. And this is not to make you right, not to make you wrong, just to get you to look at things maybe from a different point of view. And remember, consciousness, there is no completion. There is no conclusion. It's just a question always. And as long as you're functioning the question, then you're always functioning from the space of possibilities. All right, bye for now. And I hope to see you someday in person soon. Oh, by the way, you can check me out on my website at www.dranthonymattis.com and see all the fun, crazy, wild, wacky things we do called access consciousness that God dang really changes people's lives. <laughs> Too bad the whole world doesn't know about it, even though it is in 170 something different countries. But man, if everybody was using these tools, the world would be a, di a different place. I'm not gonna say better, but it would certainly be different than what it looks like now. All right, take care and love to y'all. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. If this conversation has been a contribution to you, please share, subscribe, or leave a review. For more about Anthony, please come visit dranthonymattis.com. And if you'd like to know more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can go to www.accessconsciousness.com.